All right, guys. Now I'm going to cut the strap. I got this little piece that I kind of shimmed a little bit. I think I can yeah, fix that part. Um, so I'm going to cut my strap. I already figured it was going to three, be three inches wide. So my big thing is I have to make sure this is wide enough for my cut. For the piece, the gap in here is wide enough for the piece of leather to slide into. And then I want this set at three inches. So first I'm going to worry about making sure I'm at the right thickness. That's kind of the important part right there is making sure I'm at the right thickness. All right, so I'm pretty much good there. And then I'm going to set this to three inches. Now, so you can see on there, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a ruler and I've checked it with all my other rulers and it is accurate right with the blade. So um, I know I can use that, that marking as my marking for what I need. It's already set, so all I have to do is twist this a little bit so it holds it in. And then I come up and I get it lined and I'm just gonna pull it down and make my cut. It's always kind of tricky to start at first because there's nothing to pull against or anything like that. So now that I've got it started, I want to just pull and make sure that it's flush against the handle and that it doesn't curve or anything like that. And then I just want to make sure I go at a nice steady pace. So there's my three inch strap. That's exactly what I wanted. So um, I'm going to get ready to do the rest. And I'll be back with you as soon as I'm done with getting ready to do the rest. And I'll show you the rest of the steps I'm going to go through on making this rifle sling. Okay, I did with the strap cutter. One of the things I noticed when I did do the strap cutting, and I'm sure you guys saw it too, um, the strap cutter slid. I didn't have this tight enough. So what happened is as I was cutting and I had it on my mark, this was sliding out. So I kind of make a, a cut that started where I want to, and it got wider and wider as it came down here. So I caught that, and I saw that. So I came back through. I made sure that this was right where I wanted it to be. In fact, I left it just a little bit long. And then I tightened it down real tight, and I recut my strap. Um, I don't even have the little part that came off that. Well, I do, but it's in my scrap pile right now. Um... So then what I did is I laid the templates down that I had made and I just drew them out. So the next thing is to come through and actually cut out the way the strap's gonna be. This is long here. This is obviously long here. Um, I did that because part of this is gonna have to be folded over and there's gonna be a buckle in here. Same with down here. There's gonna be a buckle in here and then this part, I have already decided that, because I was going to make a huge pattern just for the um, rivet hole, but I've already decided what I'm going to do. I'm going to go from this line here where it comes taper, to, where it tapers together, and then it makes the straight line. I'm going to go an inch and a half up from there, and I'm going to put my rivet. My stitching is going to come an inch down, and I think that's going to really tie up everything. It's going to really bolt the 4 to 5 ounce to the 8 to 9 ounce. That stitching is going to make it look really good. It's going to tie all that up together. And then up here it's going to be the same way. So it's all going to be eye pleasing instead of just the stitching ending and the stitching ending. And then up at the strap where it's folded over and I got to do all the um, stuff there. 
it's gonna look kind of weird there too so it's it's gonna actually have the ending mark there on the um english taper and i'm gonna have an english taper here after it's been pulled it over um so what i have left now is i have to cut the strap out and so i've since i got my template all done and i got everything the way i want it and the way i like it so now it's time to do that i've already stropped this um well with jeweler's rouge and then just a plain strop so i'm gonna actually start cutting this out so you guys kind of see that process um i don't know how much i'm gonna cut on camera just because that's gonna be a long waste of video and you guys are probably gonna just be bored with me cutting and cutting and cutting but mainly what i do is i make i don't cut all the way through i make a cut that scores it and then this thing will follow that cut every time so then i can just slowly work my way through make sure i've got the blade at a nice up and down down and instead of at an angle of some sort and I know I got a good cut. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to probably just cut this section out. Turn off the camera. I'll cut out the rest. And I'll probably come back after that. So, um, yeah, here we start to cut. All right. Now that I've got all that, my lighting's falling. All right, now that I got all that done, now this blade will follow right in that groove, and it'll be it's simpler, but I still gotta watch it, and I can push it on a little bit harder. Okay, and I felt that actually make it all the way through that time. On that, all I gotta do is worry about this area. I don't want to push too hard, but I just want to keep scoring it so it's nice. Now, I don't know how other people are, but when I get to the inside corner and I'm making that cut like that, that's pretty tough to me. When I'm making an outside corner like this area is where it curves like that, that's fine. But where I'm curving in and trying to make that cut, I'm going to have to figure out a way to get that better. But for right now, I'm doing pretty good. So I can't complain. All right. And that's exactly how it goes. I'll just clean this up a little bit. And there, we got a pretty clean cut there. It looks pretty perpendicular. So, um, I'll go and, well, let's do this whole side. That way you guys get to see this. I'm gonna start here, and I'm trying to keep in camera view too. So, I'm gonna start here. I'm just gonna work just like I did the other side, other way. Follow right along my pen mark. Now the other thing I know about doing these trace lines, I've heard people say use a Sharpie and I've heard other people say don't use a Sharpie. I've heard other people say use a pen and then I've heard other people say don't ever use a pen. I've heard people say use a stylus and I've heard other people say don't use a stylus. And they all got their reasons for why they're saying what they're saying. And I'm not going to knock them because it works for them. And I think that's what I'm using is I use a pen because it works for me. It, it's dark enough. I can follow it. It leaves a groove that this sits in. And that's why I use the pen. It works best for me. Um, and I think for anybody else starting out, that's a good thing too. Because just because someone says don't use it. See what other people are saying. And if you get a whole bunch of contradictory stuff like that, see what works best for you. That That's the key to everything on leather working. 
what works best for you. If it doesn't work good for you, don't use it. If it works great for you, use it. If you don't have a problem, then it's great. But like I said, I've, I've had too many people say, oh, do this. Then I've had other people say, don't do that. Then other people, there's, there's a lot of theory involved in this. So do what's best for you. I'm going to finish cutting the groove on this. And like I said, the first one, you just want to start the groove going. The blade will tend to follow that groove. So once you're doing there, as long as you're careful, your blade will follow that groove and you don't have too much to worry about. Now there I got off the groove a little bit. So I'll just come back. I notice as I start reaching further away from my body, I kind of tend to do this. So I'll have to keep it more closer to my working position. All right, now that's that's how it goes. Now I'm not too worried about the put that down so I don't stab myself as I'm explaining things. I'm not too worried about that pen mark because after I get all my tooling done, I'm gonna come by and I'm gonna bevel that edge. We're just gonna take that ink mark right off. So anything that's there, it's gonna be gone. I'm not too worried about it. Um, as far as this corner, because I came off straight like that, I can just um, nick that off. So it rounds out. The reason why I kind of want, want to get that rounded out is because any corner is going to catch on things. And then the leather is going to fold right there. And it's going to be uncomfortable for the user, the end user. So I want to make sure I'm as comfortable as possible. I get it as comfortable as possible. And I get my everything the way it. it I, I think it's supposed to look. This is my first one. Guitar straps aren't di too much different. I'd be leaving this wider. Um, I'd still stay with the three inch on the shoulder area because that's going to have a lot of support there on that bigger area like that. Um, obviously, um, definitely talk to my customer. Um, I, I'm sure people have different preferences. Everybody's got what they like and works best for them. So I think with that, I'm going to finish up this part of the video. And I'm going to do all the rest off camera. So you guys have a good one. And thanks for watching my video.